Well, here we are in the shack working on a recently received Sinclair MTV-1 Microvision television. And uh, I've got right here at the bench this farm radio that I recently recapped and I'm waiting on some new tubes to come. And uh, so that project is on hold for the moment. Let me swing around here and let you see part of my collection of the Sinclair televisions. Um, I don't know. I think I have six of these now. And I have about three of them playing. Still working on getting the tuning to work. This is a tuning knob and a, a pot that tends to go bad. And so there's parts, boxes full of parts and, and pieces and schematics and all of that here so i've got plenty of, of uh, equipment here to work with to uh check out this new uh newly received sinclair mtv1 microvision this set came from cambridge england so it took 45 days by boat to get here and uh it, it arrived safely and in and in pretty good shape it's got some cracks on the bezel as you can see here but it comes with a plastic cover over the tube, which not all these do. This is usually missing because it just pops loose. Well, I'm going to pull it out of here so I don't drop it. But you see, it's just a real thin piece of black plastic and uh, very fragile. But that's, that's very unusual to get one of these on a set like this. And it's not necessary, but it's a nice detail. Um, there are a few cracks on this set on the back and it looks like somebody might have attempted to glue them with super glue or something to kind of hold it together but um, I've got at least two of these that are not cracked oh uh, let's see um, so the microvision is a international set that runs on uh, it will run in the US UK or Europe it has three different settings for the different uh, video formats. It has a UHF VHF switch and the upper and lower VHF uh, bands. And you've, you've seen some of my other videos uh, on this particular set. So it has a UHF antenna here that opens up and, uh, and then it has the VHF antenna which is in perfect condition and that's nice to see. Um, so it also another thing to note about these if you get into collecting these um, if you'll notice here the indentations for on the stickers you can tell if the set has been opened um, outside of the factory these are screws underneath these stickers and if the only way to get to this open is to take these screws out and pull the set apart so if you receive one and these screws have been, these seals have been tampered with, you know someone's been inside the set. So I was pleased to note, and I happen to know from the seller that this was an original owner. He got it. I forgot the story, but he is the original owner and uh, got it uh, as a child. I think that's what he described. In any case, uh, here we are with a 1978 Sinclair model MTV1 and so I'm going to go ahead with this video and get this set apart see if we can get um, uh, something to come up on the screen and uh, we might plug it in before we do that just to see for fun if, if anything comes up on the screen as it is um, and you'll discover once again if you've seen my videos on the Sinclair you'll just you'll note that they have four a uh, double-A batteries in here, um, rechargeable cells. So if those are original, and they are because you can tell from the stickers have not been uh, molested. So the batteries are original to 1978. And I've actually had one TV that was original and the batteries were still, they still had a residual charge on them, which is miraculous when you think about it. Um, of course, they didn't work, but they still had some uh, remaining power on the batteries. So let's plug this in. 
Remember, we've got a 12 volt setting and a six volt setting. So we're gonna use one of the adapters here. So we have a uh, Euro power cord here, uh, 220 volt. And this is a 12 volt battery supply. And we have the, uh, what we use here in the US standard plug and it's 110 volts to uh, 12 volt. And then we also have uh, the six volt dry battery connector, which has never been used. So you hook this up to a six volt dry cell and it plugs in. And then um, I think I only have one of these and this is a 12 volt uh, cigarette lighter or cigar lighter adapter for the set and it even came with a little box which is nice so I'm very pleased with this purchase um, I'll tell you right up front I paid $80 US for this including shipping I don't know that's 58 euros I don't know what it was uh, or whatever the exchange is but in any case that's not uncommon you're gonna spend uh 50 to 80 dollars us on this as of 2021 that's about the going price for these and uh but they are a a real um uh, real treat because they are unusual and of course they claim to be the world's first pocket television but based on some of these other pocket televisions I'm not sure that they can claim that it's the world's first, but maybe it was the first one that was made in England, and these are made in St. Ives, Huntington, Huntington, England. So let's plug it in. First thing you got to do with these adapters is to double check that they are actually working. Um, and I've discovered over the years that some of these adapters are no good. And so you'd start, you plug it in and you can't get anything to work and you just assume that the adapter is good. And what do you know? So we're not worried about polarity here for the moment. Let's just double check. Got a glare, okay. All right, so 15 volts, almost 16 volts with a no load. So what we'll do, we know we got power there. And this is, won't fit into 6 volt jack because it's a 12 volt, but, and it's designed not to fit into the 6 volt port. So we'll slide that down and plug it into the 12 volt. All right, we'll see what we have, if anything, here. Actually, I have audio. Let me turn the lights off. Okay, we surprisingly, huh? I had uh, raster and audio for just a second there. That is incredible. Let's try that again. Okay, so those batteries are sucking the life out of this adapter. That is incredible. So that's a very positive sign. And the reason that I say that is in my experience with at least six of these, um, the high voltage circuits go bad really easily. These, uh, these uh, tubes, the high voltage circuits fail and there's some, there is a oscillator high voltage uh, circuit right here and the oscillator, the high volt flyback transformer, we'll call it for lack of another term. This little tiny transformer opens up and they're impossible to replace because you can't find them. And these transistors fail and so you don't get any raster. Um, I've got a couple here that have sound but no raster or whatever. And I've had to rebuild these circuits and finally get them to work. but. That's a big failure point. Usually you don't see any raster at all on the tube. 
So I'm really tickled. I don't know what that means for the repair long term. Let's try it again. Just for record, when the set is running with a new set of batteries, it'll run about 120 to 150 milliamps with the screen on and with the audio set about halfway. So some of you that are working on these sets, that might help you to know to troubleshoot that the set will fire up and run about 120 to 150 milliamps when it's running and working correctly. And again, like I said, it charges at 50 milliamps, which is very, very low charge current. But they claim in the documentation that they purposefully ran the charge at a very slow charge rate to, to save the batteries, make them last quite a bit longer. So the fast charge thing is out on these. And um, so that's the reasoning behind it, according to Sinclair. I also wanted to show you something here. This is a 6-volt cord. Um, that you can use with a dry cell and notice the pin diameter here and then this is the 12 volt cord coming from the AC adapter notice the difference in the uh, pin diameters that way you can't confuse them on the back of the set and burn something up the cigarette lighter that we have here a 12 volt of course because it's considered to be a 12 volt battery and it has uh, its uh, barrel plug and notice that they are the same because they're 12 volt. Both of these are 12 volt. And then here's the six volt connector. So what we're gonna use is, so we don't have to cut open uh, on one of these wires, we're gonna use the cigarette adapter. We'll hook the uh, power up to the adapter and uh, center pin is, is positive and the, the side pin here is negative. And then we'll hook that up to our power supply over here and then um, let me zoom back out here all right we uh, we uh, about 20 minutes has passed and no more no more indication of any current draw on the charging circuit so we're just going to proceed with opening the case we'll loosen the uh, UHF antenna that comes off first And there are two screws back here that we will take care of. But first, we take the antenna. So we open the antenna like that and then just pull it straight out. A little bit of a twist and pull it straight out. And these are really stiff, so don't be, don't be shy. You can see the uh, connector that fits, that the antenna snaps into down in there. It's just a claw that holds the antenna. See if I can put it back in. And it's pretty stiff. So you have to kind of gently work it out. And we'll set that aside. And um, next, let's take a look at this label. See if we can get this label up without making a big mess. There we go. Easy does it. Nice and slow. Just to get to the screws. All right, that's good. Get to those two screws. We got two screws here. Let's see if we can get to those. There we go. Just need to get to those two screws. And there they are. Okay. <clears throat> Put 
put them in a magnetic tray here because they're so tiny. Okay, there's four screws on the front, no screws on the sides, and these two in the back. These are antenna terminals right here, external antenna. And if you've watched any of my other Sinclair videos, you know those antenna terminals, where they go and, and the modifications that Sinclair did. Okay, so now we got the back open, and I don't see a lot of corrosion so far, which is a very good sign, but we won't know until we get in. This is the headphone jack. These are the external antenna terminals, and there you see both the 6-volt and the 12-volt connectors. And then we have the uh, adjustments for, um... oh, and by the way, this little slide, well, yeah, I was just going to say, it easily drops and then on a gray carpet, which is what I'm looking at right now, I may never find it. Here we go. So yeah, this little slide fits right in there. It doesn't clip or anything. It just sits in there. And it, you know, you choose between the two power settings it doesn't do any switching or anything it's just a little slide cover to uh, let you choose between the two voltages okay so we take these two screws out my meter's beeping at me and these two top screws come out and now the whole thing slides forward on the inside the box. So I just grab the box like this and just push it forward. And it's a little stiff. Oh, I forgot one thing that it would, it would prevent it from sliding. I almost forgot the antenna, um, little the, the antenna trim piece. This little piece right here needs to pop out. Um, and it comes straight up and out there, like, like that. So it's kind of an angle thing. See that? Kind of turns and drops in. So you kind of pop it up and out. And that's all there is. And that, that prevents the case from sliding. So now, got to watch these wires here. Now we should be able to just slide this right out. Let me open up the camera just a little bit more. There we go. And just slide it through. You gotta let these antenna wires guide in too and this whole thing just slides right in. Okay, and just gently slide it apart. There we go. Okay, I'm very pleased to see some of these boards are just completely covered with corrosion from the batteries. So this is a really great sign that this unit has been, uh, has not been overcharged or abused in that regard. And like I said, we may find some pretty bad damage inside here inside the set but let's just turn it around and around a little bit and get you a feel for it. there is some corrosion some corrosion on this board here just a little this is all the high voltage section and if the set is powered and or has been powered in the last few minutes and you touch any of these you'll get a pretty good jolt there is a 2000 volt anode voltage that is stored of course on the picture tube for a temper temporarily uh, as a like a capacitor so I've gotten hit several times and dropped some sets 
by not paying attention to these circuits here. So you have to be careful of these areas. Uh, it's unlikely that there's any power on them right now. But, okay, now, I can see a battery down inside here, and I'm sure you can too. Right there's one. Right there's a battery that came loose from the glue. It's bopping around in there, and there's another one right there, and there are two right inside here. Now, one of the things I wanted to check right off the bat is the fusible link. You can see the word link right here. And there is a super fine wire. It's a half, uh, the closest I can tell, and I don't see anything in any of the documentation, but I have replaced it with a 500 milliamp uh, fuse. I've, I've taken apart a 500 milliamp glass fuse and pinched out the element and I've soldered it in place where this was blown. This fuse, let's see, I'm gonna just gently touch it to see. If one end's broken, you wouldn't see it with your naked eye, probably. And it appears to still be intact. We can, of course, confirm that with a meter. We go to our um, continuity tester and it's it's good hear it beeping okay so the fuse is good that's a good sign nothing internally has overloaded and blown that fuse if you'll look once again on one like I said in one of the other videos that I did on this TV series this is the little network resistor network that they created that was an add-on later on the later models that um, matched a 75 or a 300 ohm I don't remember which and uh, and allows you to connect uh, a a uh, 75 ohm antenna all right well so far so good we've got there is one thing we can do to bypass the batteries and this is a tip and and I won't I won't charge you for this one we can desolder this link and hook the battery power external power supply directly here on the the 12 volts and it will bypass charging the batteries and that is an, another trick that I have used to just see if the set will power up so let's do that let's pull one end of the side the uh the fusible link off and let's see if we can get the set to power up with 12 volts through our our setup that we've got here sorry for this horrendous camera work through the, the setup we've got here with the external power supply the, the uh, battery adapter power supply so that's what we'll do we'll we'll clear that fusible link and uh let me turn the soldering iron on here and then we'll, uh, I'm going to take a coffee break while the siring iron heats up and we'll, uh, we'll continue with the troubleshooting. Now, we have to be careful because this link, and I don't want to keep heating and heating. And heating. There we go. This link is hot. That wire is hot from the battery voltage, even though we realize that the batteries are stone dead. So there's the fuse. And in fact, I think I'm just going to pull it all the way out because I'll probably lose it or break it. You have to treat this with kid gloves. There, okay. So, there's the fuse. I'm gonna set it in the tray with all the screws. So now we don't have a fusible link in here that's, that's charging the batteries. Um, 
And this test sometimes works and sometimes it doesn't. So I'm not getting my hopes up. But okay, so now we've got the power. Here we go, right here, hooked up to the power supply. And it's on 12.3 volts. And we're going to plug it into the 12 volt circuit. Just like that. And then let's see if we get anything. Okay. Nothing. Completely dead. Nothing on the amp meter on the power supply. Okay. Let's wiggle some boards here. Maybe we got some corrosion. These what they these are called Berg connectors, B E R G Berg connectors. And sometimes they again I gotta be careful. If this fires up and I'm touching that, I'll get a charge. Okay, so far I've got the volume up, so if we if it fires up, the volume will come up. Let's just wiggle gently. The Berg connectors. These boards are designed to pop out. There's only one screw right here that holds the audio board and the IF board. This is the power board. This is the tuning tuner board. And then, of course, you see the uh, picture tube, the CRT, and this is a deflection board that adjusts the width and the height and these are usually pretty hot too because they're in the high voltage section so there's three and four hundred five hundred volts in here and then there's a two thousand volt for the anode um and so all right um i don't see any obvious problems with the circuit there's i'm going to twist the board just a little bit Okay, so far no audio or video. We can turn the brightness all the way up. Contrast is full contrast already. So let's, let's turn the uh, brightness all the way up so that if we do get a picture or something or raster without audio, we'll know. It's interesting, isn't it, that we we had a little bit of power a minute ago. All right, just for giggles, let's plug the uh, the other 12 volt supply back in. Okay, nothing. Just checking the connection here. Okay, so far nothing. All right, so, all right, so we're still dead. So now what we're gonna do is, I mean, we could go through and check to see if we have power through the set, but I think what we'll do is we'll pull these boards off and spray the gold contacts with deoxit, and then uh, we'll reseat them and see if we get any any uh, any power through the system. It is completely dead. I need a smaller screwdriver. Okay, there's that one oddball screw. See, it's kind of a shoulder screw. It's kind of a oddball. Pull this back slightly. And we're just going to gently lift this board. Notice there are no screws here. No screws holding that board in. It's just held in by the uh, bird connectors. There we go. 
There we go. Okay, there's the IF board. Now you can see down in here, got the uh, power connectors here. See that battery, one of the batteries. There is some corrosion on a couple of these terminals right here. And the power passes from one side of the board to the other. So if any of these are corroded, it's gonna, it's gonna create a problem because it will not pass the voltages from one side of the board to the other. So these pins have to be clean and there is some corrosion on them. So we're very carefully going to spray these with, with the oxit. And let that just kind of soak in. Do the same with these sockets. Okay. We'll let those soak. This face is mounted to this bracket here. Let me show if I've got one here. Yeah, here's here's one. Here's one of the faces that's been taken off, one of the sets. You see, it's a little different. Um, no, it's the same. I'm sorry. I, I'm got kind it of backwards. But that's you got to take these two screws out here, just these two, and it'll pop loose and let us get access to the tuning, uh, the volume and tuning knob. Sometimes you can pull these out without doing that, but it's a little bit worrisome when I do that. So I'm just gonna pull the face plate screws loose. Okay, after a short break, I took the dog out to let her do her pee mail. Um, she had several messages to leave for some of her neighborhood friends. And so we're back. I hear her coming back upstairs. She never comes up like this during the day unless I'm doing a video. And so it's kind of funny. He's pacing back and forth, back and forth. Oh, I forgot. There's some screws on this other side. And this carpet really grabs this TV set. There's two screws here. Flat countersunk that mount to the, that screw to the TV tube CRT mount. Now, this will come off. It also holds the speaker. So once we take this off, the speaker goes nuts and dangles all over the place. And it's kind of a pain. But there, there's the bezel, the, the face plate bezel. Set that up here. Here's the speaker. And it just lays in there. Got the leads and the terminals face back this direction in case you're reassembling one of these, the terminals go back this direction. So um, in case you wanted to know. So I'm gonna take some painter's tape because it doesn't do quite, it's not quite as abusive on stuff. It doesn't hold nearly as well, but I'm gonna take some painter's tape and kind of tape this speaker in place, kind of, sort of. I don't know how well. I, I've, I've experimented with different options and have really never come up with a perfect solution other than gluing the speaker in place. But you can't do that because the speaker has to slide into these grooves right here. See? 
slides right into those grooves. So you gotta be kind of flexible. And uh, I've forgotten how bad these things grab on this carpet. Let's see, oh, let's pull this loose. One more thing, you cannot pry these up off when there's power connected because there's that'll make all these terminals hot and you'll dead short something. So you gotta be careful. All right, this all looks pretty good. It's, there's no corrosion. The pins may be corroded, but. And here's this other set of batteries we were talking about. You have two down here and two up here. And these stand on top of each other. Okay. These, these pins all look pretty good, but I'm still going to, actually let's use, uh, let's use some of this deoxid instead of the spray. I don't want spray getting all over our, everything. And these are gold contacts, by the way, and they're very fragile. And if they, if the retainer gets corroded off of, there's a little tiny electrical floating gold plated cap or uh, plate inside each one of these bird connectors. And if that little tiny gold plate, which sets right in the middle there, disappears, you will not get a good electrical connection on the pins of these boards. So it's, you've got to treat them with real, they're very fragile. I'm gonna see if I can point to one. I'm gonna zoom in and then zoom in even a little tighter. All right, where are we here? Right here. This bird connector right in there has a little flat piece of gold that comes in contact with these pins. So that's what I'm talking about. Those are very fragile. So you have to be, treat them with, with kid gloves. And I missed contact these two. Okay. And I'm going to spray the switch right in here. I'm sorry, if I can get on camera where you can see, I'm gonna spray in there. Before we do anything else, before we start replacing the batteries, which they need to be replaced, before we pull all this apart and let you look at the battery board, let's reassemble it. Get too far away here. Let's reassemble. You have to be really particular about lining these pins up, especially when we get the new batteries in because if those pins go in between their corresponding jacks, it'll re it'll short things out and pop. Don't ask me how I know that. All right, while we're here, we're going to spray this volume control knob. There we go. Okay. All right. So now we're going to do some voltage checks. All the battery terminals are marked plus and minus, and um, each cell is about two volts. The total two and a half volts, something like that. Um, I, I mean, I'm sorry, one one point two volts. 
So that cell right there shows us with the power off. That cell is showing almost zero. This one showing almost zero. These two, 1.1 volts. All right, so let's start with the zero. I mean, let's, let's start with the negative there. Come all the way back to the beginning. Find the uh, beginning of the pack here. What we should be seeing is that the charging circuit is charging the batteries. And because the set is turned off. When the set turns off and it's plugged in, the charger is enabled. And um, now there's no power turned on right here. Get this on camera. Let's just see. So I've got 1.19 volts. I'm sorry, we we'll get the camera open here so you can actually see something. 1.19 volts with the DC plugged in. And when I turn the set on, there's no change. Okay. This terminal broke. So we're gonna pull this board out and and take a look at the uh the battery board so that you can see it more clearly. So I'm gonna pull these off and we're gonna lift this. We'll, we'll take the uh, the uh, driver board off and get it out of the way where we can see the tuner board has the batteries on it. So that's what we're gonna do. I took the, uh, the audio and the uh, IF board loose. I've got two screws here. This one holds the antenna wires. And it has a little tiny strain relief on it to hold the antenna wires so that they don't yank out when we pull this free. And so what I'm going to do is I've discovered that we've just got to desolder these antenna wires because this board just yanks and yanks and yanks on the wires and it just wreaks havoc on these little tiny wires. And um, the uh, power board and tuner and the power board should lift out. There's a catch right here underneath the tube mount so we have to lift it up and out like that now we also have the antenna wires we have to free and then we also need to free the antenna clip let me show you how to do that this clip slides backwards into just like that And it's a little stiff, so you have to be, I mean, gentle, because you're working all around these fine components, but it just lifts out like that. And it's got tape on it. Come on here. Okay. So now we should be able to lift that out. And then we'll see what we've got here about the broken battery connection. See that broken connection? There is some corrosion down here. This tape is from the factory and that's they did that to protect terminals and stuff during assembly I believe. Now we got one more thing we got to disconnect. I'm telling you this is fine work. I told you these were hard to work on and I wasn't kidding. This little earpiece, this little headphone jack's got to come out. Because that's what's tied up here. That these are the head, the power, the audio connector. Audio comes all the way back here and goes through the headphone jack. And if that headphone jack is bad, you won't get any audio because it 
disconnects the audio to the speaker. So we're going to take we're going to take this nut loose and pull the headphone jack out. Okay, there we go. All right, so now our speaker tuner and battery board is free. I'm just going to hold this speaker here temporarily. But these are the 1978 batteries. All right, and we're going to look at some of the damage that can occur. See the corrosion there? We'll eat away at these at these circuit printed circuits. This right here has been uh, dumping acid out and has burnt the two audio. These are the audio um, printed circuits. Get in there real close. I went even closer. These are the audio uh, printed circuit paths and this is the main voltage power. So the main battery, main voltage power. The main power lead goes through this, comes around and comes all the way up to one of these terminals, these Berg strips that I was telling you about. So if any of this printed circuit is etched and burned or in, and broken, you won't get any power. But of course now see the, t the pin on the battery just rotted through. There's some of that alkaline on the tip of my uh, tweezers. So we're gonna get rid of these batteries because these batteries are nothing but trouble. And we're going to replace them and i'll walk you through that process as well replacing these batteries and making new ones i'm encouraged to see that there's no corrosion on the tuners the uhf and vhf tuners if these are corroded we we will have all kinds of trouble now i don't know what's going on inside here but if if we've avoided a lot of corrosion and i think we have there's some more corrosion back here. See it back in there, that green, that, that's corrosion. So we may have something broken in here. Don't know yet. See the, those leads come to these Berg strips right here, Berg connectors, see the connectors? So we're gonna get these batteries off of here and uh, replace them with new ones. I'm gonna desolder the speaker cause it's just dangling and gonna break. And we'll set the, uh, while I've got it apart, I want you to get a look at the deflection board. I don't see any burnt components. And I, I believe, I believe this may be uh, a successful repair. It's always hard to predict. I've had them tune up, I mean, power up like we saw it just a moment ago. And then spend three weeks troubleshooting, trying to find some kind of a, of a breakdown somewhere in some of the circuits. So you just never know. These There are some electro electrolytic caps that can go bad. One, two, three, four, five, six of them. And those sometimes are bad, sometimes they're not. And uh, I've had some bad transistors in here that caused, prevented the uh, horizontal oscillator from going and creating high voltage inside this little transformer, like a little bitty flyback transformer. So, We've got a lot of work to do here to get these batteries replaced. So that'll be the next step. We'll replace the batteries on the, the uh, tuner board. Let's get rid of this speaker for the time being. There we go. We'll set that aside. Sweet little 5 ohm, believe it or not, a 5 ohm speaker. 5 ohm speaker. So now we can desolder, and I'll get the desoldering tool out, and we'll desolder these clumps of solder and get rid of these batteries. All right, we've got things ready to go here. And uh, we're going to just put some, pull the solder off of these battery leads. Ah. 
Well, that just fell out, didn't it? There we go. Okay, just for giggles, let's uh, let's see what kind of power remains on a 1978 battery. That one's gone. Point. Twenty three millivolts, which is basically shot. Okay. And uh, let's pull this one loose. These two leads. You see the polarity to help you put everything back together correctly. I'll tell you that comes in handy. All right, and then the last two, which are in series, they're mounted in series. They have a little bridge. We'll look. We'll cut that open and and let you see what that looks like. All right. <clears throat> let's see if we have any power. On these two batteries, look at that, two volts, I mean 1.19 volts, so one of these batteries is still good. <clears throat> so we're dealing with 40 three-year-old batteries. Forty-three-year-old NICADs. You wouldn't think there'd be anything hardly left of a four-year-old NICAD. So here's how the, the heat sink. And let's break into the, uh, the new 1.2 volt batteries. High energy, nickel metal hydride. Very nice batteries. These will run this TV a lot longer than it originally was running. If we can get it all put back together and running right. By the way, there's a date code here. I just noticed 1978. So somebody was working on the set 42 years ago. All right. And here's what we were talking about earlier. Oh, my pardons for the bumping camera work there. The, uh, well, there we go. Um, these traces may be corroded to the point that we've lost power completely. We had power for a moment, though, didn't we? That terminal's going to have to be pulled out. That one was the leftover one that broke from the battery. And uh, we've got some corrosion underneath here. And I don't know. Got some corrosion here. And let's see what it looks like up here. Looks pretty good. These are usually rotted completely off because of this battery pack right here. But these batteries, we got, we got to them before they got too bad. There is some damage, but we may have to check this connection. I'm just curious if we have any continuity from that pin right there all the way around to this battery terminal. Uh, we'll check that in just a second. 
and then we're going to also check to see if we have any continuity from the uh, audio terminals here around up into the connections that connect to the audio board so let's do that let's check those before we get put batteries on top of these bad traces and uh, let's just check and see if we have bad traces okay okay so we're up we're going to check from here all the way around to the battery that's this trace this trace right here so we're on second terminal there and here and it's good yeah it's good that's the good news all right now let's check the audio good all the way through both traces Now we'll use some vinegar to clean these traces and stop any further corrosion from occurring. We neutralize that acid, or that corrosion, excuse me. Then uh, it'll stop the corrosion from continuing. Even though we're putting in new batteries, we've got to stop this corrosion process or six months from now this set won't work and we won't know why so hopefully this um, vinegar will eat away at the corrosion and then we're going to coat it with the oxid <clears throat> okay. There we go. Oh, and while we're here, let's treat the tuner. These tuner pots really get, they, they break. The, the elements in there are so fragile that they break. And um, then of course the tuner circuit is open and it doesn't tune a TV station. So we'll treat that carbon film resistor material there. Okay. Plus and minus. So minus. Got to go in there like that. Now we can do this a couple of ways. These tabs are too wide to fit in those slots. So I've done it a couple of ways. I've soldered little wires to these tabs and just inserted the wires into the circuit board. That pair of pliers is shot. And, uh, but I'm gonna do it this way this time. I'm gonna narrow these tabs. <laughs>
Okay. All right, pull the battery down tight against the board like that. It's got to be tight. Just be careful not to short anything. Now, you're working with a live battery now, so uh, you say, well, it's only a bolt, 1.2 volts, but I'll tell you what, you're working with two amps, 2,000 milliamps. You're working with two full amps of battery power, and that can really do some damage. To the circuit board plus create quite a bit of a spark so just keep that in mind when you're working with replacing these batteries it it's uh it can be a little bit a little bit dangerous it's not too bad but just be careful so we're gonna get that one on good get on the tab Next year, we go get on the tab. Same here. On the tab, good. And uh, let that cool for just a second. And then trim the tab. Trim the tab. There we go. So, did we get the right polarity? Positive, positive. You got to observe polarity. <laughs> and it's a shame because you can't test all this to get all buttoned back up. And if you put something in backwards, well, you'll probably discover it with um, some sparks or something before you get it all put together. You'll probably ref, you'll probably see that there's uh, some something is wrong. Something will smoke or whatever. Um, boy, those little wire cutters just aren't made for trimming this stuff. Good. All right, so we got two batteries in. Now the next two. Are a little more complicated because we gotta we gotta wire them. I threw them away already, but that's okay. So this takes a little bit of practice, and and of course you're working with live batteries, so there you have to be very careful not to short these together unless they're parallel. Um, so we got to be really careful handling these with tabs because when you're fiddling around here, you're liable to short something out and and really create problems. So I'm gonna put the tab straight out on that battery and I'm gonna lay it right here like this. And this will be the negative side. And we'll take this one and come around to this side. So this will be the, um, this terminal negative here. And this is positive up there. See the positive right there. So we'll put the positive up there. So we can do it one of two ways. We can run a wire, and I usually just solder a wire from here over to here, and then trim that tab off completely. And then this tab, which is, um, I've got them backwards. Um, this tab then becomes um, the positive side, and this pile, this is the negative side. You see, the board, it's going to sit on the board like this, just like we saw a minute ago. So what I usually do is hot glue these together first so that I can handle them because they're hard to handle. They slide all over and you're soldering and it's, they get all over. So, um, all right. So we'll, uh, we'll figure out the polarity and then we'll... Uh, find out which tabs we're going to use for which which end and trim those tabs down <clears throat> and we'll go from there and I can tack it here we go all right
Okay. I'll, uh, I'll show you the polarity and how this works in just a second. So when you do it this way, like that, the, um, the heat on the solder and everything is on this curl rather than directly onto the battery. And uh, takes a little bit of the heat directly off of the battery itself. We'll pull that tab up just a little bit. There we go. Doesn't take a lot of heat, but there we go. Good electrical connection. Okay, so now <clears throat> got our negative side goes around to the positive. So what we've got to do is take a wire from here and jump down past this and go into the board, into the board. So we're going to cut this one off too, like I suggested earlier. Don't take it all off, just take it where you can get a curl, take the heat off. We're not going to cut this one because this, I mean, we're not going to cut it off. We're going to cut it like this and that'll go directly into the board. Perfect. So there we have our battery pack, our other battery pack. Not much to it. And it will set right here like this. There's the negative, there's the positive, positive around to the negative. There we go. And that hugs this tuner right here. I push it all the way down. It stomps on the speaker wires just like that. See the speaker wire there? It sits right on top of them and it's centered on the board. I want to fold this over and fold this back like that just so it'll stay on there. Now I, I forgot to mention because this is a double-sided board, here we need a little bit on both sides. So we've got to have a little bit of wire to solder this side and this side. So that's what we'll do next. And then we can push the battery down because that wire's a little bit long and that'll be fine. So let's do that. And I want to find some really thin solder. We call it solder. I grew up calling it solder, <clears throat> like S-O-D-D-E-R. And I know it's solder. I know that, but I've never, ever called it solder. I know that the brightest man in electronics today is Mr. Carson. And he calls it solder. Solder. And he's, he's correct. It, that's probably the correct way to say it. But I grew up calling it solder. So I'm hoping that the dictionary has two pronunciations for that. And one of them is solder. Otherwise, I've been saying it wrong my whole life. And I don't plan to change anytime soon. But yeah. There we go. We could use a little more check to be, make sure we got a really good connection there. There we go. That's much better. Much better soldering. 
now let's get the uh, negative side here. And I'm going to do one more thing on this battery pack. Still hot. Always freaks me out. I think, uh-oh, do I got a short? So I got the negative here, positive over here. Got them, got them wired correctly. Got to double check, triple check, and check to check. Now I'm going to put some hot glue right under here just to keep it a little bit stiff. And uh, push this side down because it's going to be too tight if I don't. And solder, or solder it, hot glue it right there. So now <clears throat> we got those two batteries. These don't need to be solder, hot, hot glued in because the terminals are holding them nice and, and stiff. So, all right. Now we got a couple of things we got to be careful with. We got this antenna wire dangling around here, which uh, we've got to get back on camera. This antenna connection come around here and short and blow something up. Now that we've got 4.8 volts. So let's just, um, let's just pray that things are correct here. We're going to double check this link. Should be zero volts. Here it is. Okay. Okay, good, good, good. So the fusible link is still good. <clears throat> All right, so let's put this tuner back on. I'll unplug the glue gun. All this stuff can create a short for us on the board, so you gotta be cognizant of that. All right, I'm going to put the audio in first. Yeah, we're right here. This connector needs to be put in like that. See where the leads are coming out this direction, and it's parallel to the ca chassis. Um, otherwise, things bind up when we put it all together, and it doesn't fit correctly, and... And that's why. So I get this small thumbs this afternoon. There we go. Okay, nice and snug. Flip it over. Guide the uh, antenna wires out above. Speaker wires go underneath like that. And then, uh, if they don't break. And this right under here, like that. So, okay. okay there we go. All right. So, two screws. Remember, strain relief for the uh, antenna wires. Okay. And this slides back in here just like just like that. There's a slot for it and it slips in and just pops in place. If you're having trouble putting it in there correctly, it's probably because you don't have it in the slot. All right. Let's put the speaker back. Now, this, these batteries are pushed really close to this side. I don't like that. For some reason, I didn't notice how close they were. This opening space is where the battery is set. So we're going to see. It looks like it's pretty close, but let's see if we're, we're okay. Let's try it. Line all the pins up. And now again, 
we have to have everything lined up correctly or we'll short something. So be very careful plugging all this back in. Power's off. And the IF board, I'm, I'm eyeballing and lining up all the pins down inside this crack here. Looking in here, if you get it wrong, it'll blow the fuse for sure. Okay, there we go. All right. So, we don't know if something blew earlier when we had power and we don't have it, and we stopped having it, but let's see if we have anything at all now. Uh-oh. All right. Let's do a, uh, a check on whether we have power to charge the batteries. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you, I'm going to turn, move you up to the uh, power supply. And while you're looking at that, I'm going to plug this circuit that you're looking at into the 12 volt jack and we don't have anything so we should have like i said we should have 50 50 milliamps so i'm not sure what's going on there checking all my connections We will do some battery checks here. Get on ground. The ground plane. And we'll just poke around here and see. Okay. Three volts. Three volts. Power's on. Um, all right. Now, we'll look at the schematic. But let's take a look at the schematic. Let's see where we're, what, what's missing. Okay, we've got the, the, the chassis flipped upside down so that we can compare these numbers, these here, because we're on... We're looking at the down on top of, I don't want to get shocked here. Make sure we got four and a half volts or whatever, five volts. Our ground plane um, is all here. So we should have five right here. ACG gating, video, audio, zero volts, sync, and five volts first pin right there is five volts so we're going to go to zero and first pin so we're dead we have no power to circuit so we're missing something somewhere either a bad uh, connection in this jack that could be creating problems for us but this power comes from the, the top board <clears throat> and goes down. So let's check these voltages. We don't have any power. All right. Now here we got battery down here at the bottom. Got four terminals. Should have five volts there. We don't even have five volts there. Yeah, so we don't have power up here to the uh, we still have on zero here. Three volts. 
three volts, two volts, huh, I think we've lost our power, it goes from here to here to here, over to here, to this terminal, through the batteries to here. So, yeah, something's open. Something is open. All right, power off. Let's pull this up. Let's pull this up. You know, we had power for a second, remember? We saw that earlier on the video. And I don't know if it was just because there was a intermittent connection. Well, clearly there was an intermittent connection or something. Um, so something is awry here. Could be one of these connections. Let me zoom in here. Could be one of these is open that looks good actually um, hold the door here I think I found a problem maybe I don't know I'm gonna zoom in here and let you see what I'm seeing I'm going to go live with the camera. See that? I'd say, folks, we got problemos. see when these are unplugged when these circuits are when these power cords are unplugged the switch is closed see the switch in there right there that switch when that's closed it allows power to get to the board through the batteries so if this circuit is open this 12 volt circuit or whatever is open and there is a burnt wire there see that So we got trouble. All right, let's see what we can do. See that? I'd say, folks, we got problemos. Well, we've got a burnt wire here. And that definitely will prevent power from getting either from power supply or uh, from the uh, DC power or the batteries. So let's see what happened here. Unwind this. All right, it's the ground wire between the two 6 volt and 12 volt, which would prevent it from running off of DC, external DC power, and also prevent it from running off of um, the battery. Strangely enough, it's, let me, let me show you on this board here. This is what we're looking at here, with the exception of one of the other connectors. But it's this brown wire right here that's burnt all the way to the, to the main board so 
that's the connection right there and let's see um can we get to it without tearing it apart nope probably not not and do a perfect job so let's uh let's take it all back apart and strange what caused that any kind of a short don't see any other burnt components I don't know maybe Maybe the brown and purple melted together. I don't know. It's just really hard to say. So I think what I'm going to do, since I've got a spare over here, I think I'll take, here's the spare, guys. I think I'll just pull this one loose and use those. and solder that six volt socket that's missing here. There's the six, that's the 12 volt. We just need a six volt. Yeah. You can see the pins and the size of those pins. Okay, we've got it all back together. Put the new, uh, or put the uh, connector in there and wired it in. So, the acid test, here goes. Okay, we still have a fuse. Um, okay. Okay, let's see if we got battery charging going on now. Audio. Huh. Not sure why we don't have battery power, but we'll track that, chase that thing down in a minute. Okay, we've got audio. Curious why our battery connection is not working.
Let's put the antenna back. Okay. Let's see if we can get some video on here. Okay. Getting much closer now. I'm adjusting the contrast knob. sure why we don't have power on the batteries but we're making progress so let's uh kind of regroup here when i have this plugged in let me turn the lights on you can see that we don't have any charging going on here and when I turn the power on, pulling about 130 milliamps for, and that's that's good. That's what it should be pulling for uh, running the TV. But when we turn it off, we lose we lose our charge circuit, which means that the battery circuits are not are not working. And uh, so we might have an open trace like we were looking at earlier. Maybe by fiddling around with the unit, we have lost um, you know we've lost uh, we've got a broken trace like we were talking about earlier. So I'm going to uh, going to go back to the power supply board and chase the voltages down here to make sure that everything is working. The good news is that it's very rare for one of these sets to tune a, re a TV station like it has tonight. There is a, a bad contrast pot. I'm going to put a little bit of um, deoxid on it and let it sit overnight. That might clear that up. And um, in any case, we are, we're not charging the batteries and we're not getting battery power to the set. So we could have we could have a a bad connection on one of these pins. So we'll work down the list and just check them and see if we can get the power to fire up. And um, we'll just keep working at it. Also, the audio is weak, which means your caps on this audio board are need to be uh, replaced. These caps on these audio boards um, are are pretty suspect and I've replaced several on some of these TVs and uh, and I'm sure that's that's part of what's going on with the audio hey well if you watched all the way through to this point uh, we're gonna stop here because this video is pretty long but I wanted to get to a point of some measure of success with the uh, video playing on two different channels and so that was pretty cool that we've got uh, video still a little unstable, but I think some of that has to do with the antenna and the case is not on and the the contrast pot as we mentioned is a little bit dirty. So the video is coming in and out All the video runs through the video Signal runs through the contrast first and then goes to the picture tube And so if that if that contrast pot is 
is flaky, it'll just drop complete video. You'll still have audio and you'll have a raster, but you won't have any intelligence coming through. So that's a, that's a problem with these sets. In any case, uh, it's clear that there's something wrong with the battery circuit. We have, uh, it's operating off of uh, AC or the uh, adapter, external power. It's running off of those. But the fact that there's no battery charger uh, working means that the batteries just aren't somehow connected. Does something happen, either a, a bad trace or, or some failure in my part in putting the batteries in. So we're gonna, the next part two, we're gonna tear into that and resolve that problem and then get the set finished up and, and lined up, get the geometry lined up correctly and uh, we'll, we'll consider it a successful repair. Thanks for watching this far and uh, keeping up with the vintage tech. Look forward to seeing you in part two.